Yo, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be looking at the derivation for the integrator rate loss for zero order reactions, first order reactions, and second order uh, reactions. So let's get started with uh, zero order reactions, reactions, and all of these derivations are really going to come from the rate law for the reaction. So for a zero order reaction, your rate law uh, tells you that the rate is equal to K times the concentration of A to the zero power. And since anything to the zero power is just one, uh, we can just write that as K. Now, the important thing to know about the rate is that the rate represents the instantaneous change in your concentration over time. So we can write our rate as the uh, as D concentration of A over DT. It's your change in your concentration over your time. It's your instantaneous change in your concentration over time. If you notice though, your, your concentrations are always going to be going down. So it makes sense for the change in your concentration um, to be a negative number. Your, it makes sense for your change in your uh, dA over dt to be a negative value. When we do rate, we want the rate as uh, the rate of decrease. But when we look at the derivative of it, that has to be a negative value because the concentration is always going down. So we need a negative here. Um, and then we can write the rest equals K. Okay, now it's our job to find out what the, uh, the concentration of uh, a reactant is at, at some time. And the rate, if you take the integral of the rate, you're gonna get your change in concentration. It's very similar to in physics, if you take the integral of your velocity, you're gonna get your displacement. So if we take the integral of our uh, dA over dt, that's going to give us our change in concentration. And from our change in concentration, we can find our uh, concentration at some time t because we're going to know our initial concentration. So all we have to really do is integrate this, um, this equation, and that will give us our integrated rate law for zero order reactions. Okay, since this is a differential equation, our dA over dt is a differential equation, it, it's in terms of two variables we can move our dt to the right hand side. So let's do dA is equal to minus k dt. And all we have to do now is take the integral. So the integral of dA uh, is equal to minus k times the integral of dt. Uh, the k goes in front because it's just a constant, it's your rate constant. But be careful, these integrals aren't just uh, indefinite integrals, these are definite integrals you're dealing with time from zero to, to the time t, and you're dealing with your concentration from initial concentration to your concentration at time t. So uh, these integrals need bounds, um, and the bounds are from uh, the, the initial concentration to the concentration at time t, um, and for our dt, it's gonna be from zero to time t. From here, it's pretty easy to integrate this. The integral of your dA is just gonna be your A, uh, evaluated at d or at and your initial concentration um, that's going to equal minus k times uh, the integral of dt that's just going to be t evaluated from t to zero um, and so that comes out to a t the concentration at some time t minus the initial concentration is equal to minus k t um, and then you can just uh, isolate your concentration at some time t. That comes out to minus kt plus the concentration, your initial concentration. And that is your integrator rate law for zero order reactions. Um, it's in the form of y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. y is your, um, is your concentration at some time t. Your m is your minus k. And your uh, b is your initial concentration. So if you look at the graph of this, if you were to graph your concentration over time, it would be a negative slope. Uh, the slope is negative k, and your intercept is going to be at your initial concentration. And so that's why the graph for your um, zero order integrator rate law makes sense. You might have seen it before. This is where it's coming from. All right, now that we've done uh, first uh, zero order, let's do second, or sorry, first order first order reactions and the process is going to be very much similar so our rate 
is equal to k times the concentration of a to the first power because we're dealing with a first order reaction um, and we can do the same thing it's minus minus r uh, sorry minus d a over d t is equal to k times your concentration of a we can do the same thing we can take uh, the dt and move it to the other side uh, sorry we can take dt uh, and move it to the other side so we get minus k uh, dt times the concentration of a for simplicity for simplicity's sake we kind of only want all the a's everything to do with the a's on one side so we can take both sides and divide by our concentration of a um, our concentration of a and that gives you that d a over your concentration of a is equal to minus k dt and from here it's the same process it, you have to take the integral of d a over a evaluated from your initial concentration to concentration at time t and that's equal to minus k times the derivative sorry the integral of dt evaluated from zero to time or your time t to solve the integral on the left, you can just use u sub. So uh, your u is going to be uh, the natural log of x. du is uh, 1 over x uh, dx. And I guess it really shouldn't be x, my bad. It should be your concentrations of a. Um, so the natural log of the concentration of a uh, times 1 over the concentration of a. Um, and then that's d, uh, the concentration of a. Um, and so this, uh, if you you know, finish uh, taking the derivative, that's going to be the natural log of A evaluated from um, A at the concentration of A at time T and your initial concentration. Um, and I'm kind of running out of space, I'm sorry. Um, that's going to equal K times this derivative. That's just time uh, evaluated from t uh, from zero to, uh, zero to time T, sorry. Um, and so it all comes down to the natural log of a at some time, uh, the concentration of A at some time T minus the natural log of your initial concentration, that's going to equal uh, K. Uh, there should be a minus here. There should be it's, uh, so it's a minus KT. All right, um, and then from here it's just isolating your concentration of uh, A at some time T. That's going to equal minus KT plus the natural log of your uh, of your initial concentration. And this is again a y equals mx plus b form, y equals mx plus b. That's why if you look at the graph for a zero order, for a first order reaction, the natural log of your concentration over time, that's going to be a negative slope and it's linear. Your m is your minus k, and your intercept here is just going to be. Uh, the natural log of your initial concentration. And that's uh, first order. So that's how you derive your first order integrator rate law. Let's look at our second order. I guess I'll do it down here. Um, what color should I choose? Let's do black. All right. Third order uh, reaction. Okay. It's the same thing. Sorry. That should be a two. I'm out of it. Okay. Your rate is equal to k times the concentration of a to the second power because it's a second order reaction you know your rate is minus dA over dt um, that's going to equal k times the concentration of a squared um, take dt to the other side so dA is equal to minus k dt times the concentration of a squared you want uh, all your a's on one side, so let's divide both sides by the concentration of a squared. Uh, a squared, so these cancel out. And you're left with dA over the concentration of a squared equals minus k dt. It's the same process from here. You take the integral of dA over the concentration of a squared. Um, and this is evaluated from your initial concentration to your final concentration or your concentration at some time t that's going to equal minus k times the integral of dt evaluated from 0 to t um, and then from here that's just like your power rule um, and that comes out to 
negative 1 over, over the concentration of A evaluated from A T and your initial concentration, that's going to equal minus K uh, T. All right, so that's minus 1 over your concentration at some time T plus your initial concentration. Um, that's going to equal minus K T. And if you clean this up a little, 1 over your concentration at some time t is equal to uh, kt plus 1 over your initial concentration. And that is your integrated rate law for the uh, for third order reactions. And that explains the graph that you get. Uh, the fact that when you take the integral, you have a negative here, that means that your slope ends up being positive. That's why if you look at the graph for a second order reaction, if you look at 1 over the concentration of A over time, the slope is actually positive. It's uh, positive K, while all the other ones, your zero order and your first order, had a slope of negative K. And your intercept here is just going to be 1 over your initial concentration. And that's how you look at second order reactions with your integrated rate laws. That's why the graph looks like that. Um, and that's the derivation for zero order, first order, and second order. I hope this gives you a better um, I guess, explanation for why you use them or where these integrated rate laws come, come from. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something, and I hope to see you later. Thank you.